What's going on everybody? You live in the Finger Lakes and you're considering selling your home. This video is gonna be a guide of how to sell your home in the Finger Lakes. Let's go. What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Anthony. This is my partner Avery and we are American Home Team. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell so you're notified every Tuesday and Thursday that we release a new video. 100% guys, and we are licensed realtors here in the state of New York. So that means as much as we love making these videos, we would love even more to help you with your real estate needs. Go ahead, shoot us a text, a phone call, and or an email to you, the number and the email address provided. We would love to have a conversation with you and help you make a smooth move to upstate New York, to the Finger Lakes region, Rochester region, you name it, we'd love to help you. And without further ado, today we're talking about everything you need to know about selling your home in the Finger Lakes region. Yeah guys, so step number one, just like if you watch the buying process that we recorded, the first step is gonna be setting up a Zoom consultation call with us. This is gonna allow us to understand your goals and your needs as a seller. Where, you know, where are you going? Um, why are you selling? What are you looking to do after the sale? Yep. Uh, things like that. We are not so much interested in the sale process as we are your goals and ambitions of why you're selling your home. Yeah. And so if that means that you're moving to Louisiana, then cool. We want to help you do that, but we need to put a plan into place to help you do that in the smoothest way possible. That's going to get you the most bang for your buck, and that's going to make the most sense for you and your family. Like we've said in multiple videos already, we do have connections in various states, almost I, I think every single state throughout yeah. the United States. So we can put you in contact with a very good professional down in that area, wherever you're looking, to help kind of set up searches prior to your home here in the Finger Lakes going yep. on the market. Yep, but also we want to take that time to understand, you know, like Anthony said, why you're selling your home, but are you going into a rental, right? Are you going to be purchasing your parents' home, right? Or maybe it's just a transfer of ownership, right? Like we're doing a quick claim deed or something of that nature. So you want to sell yours and move into your parents' house, whatever that looks like for you, we want to make sure we understand it. And so this Zoom call, really helps us do so yep. and gives us a opportunity to put a plan into place moving further down the chain. Absolutely. All right, guys, so moving on to step number two is going to be us touring your home. You kind of showing us around, showing us your favorite parts of the house. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to get eyes on the property for multiple purposes, right? It's gonna allow us to think about pricing strategy. And this is what we're gonna sit down and talk to you about on your couch in your living room is pricing strategy. What are the focal points of the house? what aren't the focal points, what yep. needs to be done prior to listing possibly, right? Yep. It'll allow us to better understand how we can run a comparative market analysis and do a professional assessment on your house. That's right. And you know, here in the Finger Lakes, a lot of people don't know this because they look at Zillow or Realtor.com and they see the Zestimate or the Realtor value or whatever, but we live in a hyper local market. Yep. And what that means is that the price range could vary street to street, neighborhood to neighborhood, or just different sections of the town, city, or village that you live in. And so while you know your home might be close to that Zestimate value, probably not gonna be accurate. You could miss out on thousands of dollars or overprice your home by thousands of dollars mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, for example, in the town that we live in, there are two streets in particular that top out at about $200,000. You could go a street over and you're in the mid 300s or $400,000. So if you're taking the average, which is the Zestimate, then you're gonna be potentially screwing yourself out of some money because it's averaging those $200,000 homes yep. with your $400,000 home. So you're not gonna be getting as much money. So that's where we come in. We're gonna tour your home. We're gonna talk to you guys, like Anthony said, about the best features of the home. And then we're gonna come up with a pricing strategy on how we're gonna list your home and see if it makes sense with you to get the top dollar, right? The amount of money that you need to move on with your future endeavors. And I, I think one of the most important parts of this process is helping you guys understand the pricing strategy, right? Yeah. So a lot of the time we go in and we talk to sellers and they're like, oh, we gotta list the price high so that, you know, 
know, if somebody offers low, then we can get what we want. That's not necessarily how things work. Maybe, maybe when you're buying a car or you're listing something on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, but not buying a house, especially in the Rochester real estate market or the Finger Lakes real estate market. Yeah. So getting you to understand that pricing strategy, I think is absolutely crucial and, and critical. And we can only do that by sitting down with you on your couch while touring your home and getting eyes on your house. Thousand percent. All right, so step number three actually comes on the backside of step number two, while we're there talking with you about pricing and, and whatnot, we're also gonna discuss with you our marketing strategy. Our marketing strategy can vary from all the photos we're gonna take, the drone footage we're gonna take, the video walkthrough that we're gonna do, and then also how are we gonna pump it out to the outlets that need it pumped out to, yeah. right? Because your home, is not a one size fits all. It, there's a different demographic for every single house out there in every neighborhood out there in every street, right? Like I said, real estate here in the Finger Lakes is hyper local. So I'm not gonna market, we're not gonna market one home the same as any other home because it is hyper local. Absolutely, and guys, marketing is arguably the most important aspect to selling your house. Honestly, above and beyond the pricing strategy. Although the pricing strategy is extremely important you don't want to mess that up marketing is I think above that because with property uh, proper marketing and effective marketing you can likely get a lot higher prices for your home with poor marketing or ineffective marketing rather you're likely not gonna get the most bang for your buck on that so yeah I think it's super important and it's super undervalued and so if your house is marketed effectively um, the right way I think you're gonna be a cut above the rest yeah so I always tell our clients that we are not not salespeople, yep. we're marketers. And really what the marketing does is it brings eyeballs to your property. If we're not bringing eyeballs to your property and the eyeballs that can actually afford your property, we're not doing our job. And even if I was a salesman, right? If I called myself a salesman, that would still not be doing my job. So we need as many eyeballs on your home as possible in order to drive that price up and accomplish your goals. Yeah, guys, your, your guys' house will sell itself, right? Once people get to your house, it'll sell itself because we'll make sure that everything is in pristine condition, everything's looking good, the house is clean, and maybe any small minor touch-ups or repairs are done prior to uh, getting the house listed. And that is something that we would talk about during that uh, that consultation when we're at your house is what are the things that need to uh, maybe be repaired or touched up or just a little bit of paint but that's a different conversation marketing is getting those people to your house yep. without showing your house how can it sell moving on to step number four we are putting your house on the market and getting it ready to show with all of the previous steps. We want to open your doors and make it as available as possible yep. to the largest buyer pool. And so what that means is that we're going to put a lockbox on your door. We're going to put a sign in the yard and we're going to let people know that that baby is for sale. Yep. And hopefully with our marketing, there's going to be a hundred people in there and we're going to get 17 offers. But step number four is making sure that it's ready. And so what that means is that we're gonna have a conversation with you guys about, hey, you need to be ready to vacate the premises at any given moment if you actually wanna sell your house. Sounded so legal there, like an attorney. I we're am. not attorneys, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, one of the most crucial parts to showing your house is making sure that you as the owner is out of it. Honestly, because as a buyer, the last thing you want or the thing that's gonna make you feel most uncomfortable when walking through that house is when the person who has put their blood, sweat, and tears into that house is sitting there kind of analyzing your every word, right? Yeah. And even if it's harmless, right? Like many people are, or many sellers who are in the house are harmless, it still is uncomfortable for a buyer to walk through and see the owner there. And they're not gonna want to express their, their feelings and emotions and their wants and needs with their agent just yeah. because that owner is there. Right? If they say something that maybe the uh, seller doesn't like, then they're gonna get the feeling that the seller is gonna hold that against them. Yep. Now with that said, that does not mean that your property is gonna be vacant or that doesn't mean that there's not gonna be a licensed professional right. on the property. Right. There will either be one of us two, one of our partners, or a buyer's agent that represents the buyer that's walking through mm -hmm. the property. So a buyer off the street is not gonna be walking through your home all willy nilly, right? They will be supervised. 
It'll be like kindergarten. There's gonna be a professional <laughs> on site walking through with that buyer. They will be, they will not be left alone in mm -hmm. that home, which brings us to a good point. We're gonna advise you to, you know, hide your kids, hide your money, hide your guns, all of that stuff, right? We'll have that conversation with you. However, just understand that the buyer is not gonna be walking through your home by themselves. Yep. All right guys, so after your period of showings is uh, complete, a lot of the time what we do is delayed negotiations, right? So that's a, a simple process where you hold all offers until the end of your showing period and you get to name that showing period. Usually we give buyers about a week or so to offer or to make decisions to based days. on that house yep. or to see the house rather. And what that does is that helps accumulate the interest on your house and and pit competition against each other. And so therefore jacking your price up, up, up and up. So once that period is up and we start receiving all the offers, we will then compile a list, probably in an Excel spreadsheet or some other file that's easy for you guys to read and understand. Yep. And it's broken down by us. And then we'll sit down and we'll give you our professional analysis of what the most important things are based on the conversations that maybe that you and us had. And based on that, we can come to a decision. Yep. Sometimes it can get hairy because you might have 26 offers. Yeah. If you have like five or six, it's easy, it's cake. Yeah. Yep. But the more offers you have, the hairier it can get, the more stipulations you kind of run into or the but more contingencies, things like that. The more offers you get, the easier it is to pin the one offer against another and drive that price up, right? Yep. Now now they're competing. People like a little bit of a challenge in their life. And so when it comes to the home, obviously there's gonna be a threshold there of how much risk the buyer is willing to take. And that's for us to kind of feel out, right? If you want us to push them a little bit, we have to, yep. right? We're your fiduciary, we do what you say. But yes, it's our job to help you analyze those offers and in an organized manner and advise you on you know what we think is gonna be the strongest offer, right? At the end of the day, the offer doesn't matter if it doesn't get to the closing table. We always say, you know, everyone says cash is king. Not necessarily. If that cash doesn't get to the closing table, it's as good as zero, right? Everything is cash when it's in your bank account. That's right. Once it gets deposited, it's all the same. Money yep. is money. There so, it is. So at that point, what we're really looking at is contingencies. We're looking at how strong of a qualification maybe a buyer that carries a mortgage is, right? How strong is their earnest money deposit or in other states, they call it escrow. We're looking at all of that and we're analyzing it with you guys and helping you guys understand all of it so that you guys can make the best decision. Yep. All right, guys. So congratulations. You made it to the next step. You accepted an offer on your house. Yep. Hopefully, if we did our job, <laughs> it's gonna be something that you're super happy with. And right? we will do our job. Yeah, so from here, you're gonna be working through the period of, if there's an inspection, you're going through the inspection. And then you're going through appraisals if there's a mortgage on the, on the offer, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going through any other contingency that is laid out in that contract that we accepted and we uh, communicated to you. That's right. And with the inspection and the appraisal, it's also our job to help you understand any risks yep. associated with the inspection or the appraisal. There will be some things like cracked drywall. If the home was an older home and it has latham plaster, maybe there's asbestos in it and maybe an inspector is gonna point that out. We do live in a historic area, so there are some of those homes. However, it's our job to kind of advise you through some of that, coach you through that. But typically an inspection and appraisal aren't really anything to worry about. And like I said, we'll coach you through it, help you understand the steps of that. And to interrupt you real quick, not only coach you through that, but our job is to also be in communication with that buyer's agent so that when Good they point. see something come up on a inspection report, yep. we can talk to them and we can say, hey, you know, this is what I know about this scenario or this issue in the house, right? Yep. And based on what we know and based on other assessments and whatnot, that homework that we've done, it's not a concern or it's gonna cost $200 to fix, right? right. If we need to, we'll, we'll pay for that to get it done. We've, um, we've painted decks, we've went and boarded up windows because the sliding glass door went out to nothing. It was a two story <laughs> and the sliding glass door just went out to nothing and there was probably a 20 foot drop there. And so we've boarded up doors. We've done a lot of things for our sellers to help them get through that appraisal process should the appraiser come up with a value that's subject to yep. some kind of repair. Yep. But with that said, assuming that everything goes through the process fine and dandy, 
Now we're at the closing table, right? The attorney's jobs, we are in an attorney state here in New York. So the attorney's job is to go over some of the survey stuff, go over some of the title and the deed, right? And make sure that all of that is in order and get the closing documents situated. There's gonna be a closing statement and yes, sometimes Sellers have to come to closing with closing money, right? Which typically is brought out of, or taken out of the proceeds from the sale, yeah. right? Things like commission, a survey maybe, I don't know. There's a ton of different things, but yes, sellers have closing costs. So we'll advise you on that. Your attorney will advise you on that. And then they'll have you go into the office and sign closing documents. Yep. That's literally like signing four pieces of paper and you're saying that, hey, whenever the buyer is ready to close and then the buyer signs and we close. And so if you're watching this and you have a house to sell, then typically, or the seller's side, is not anywhere close to as uh, strenuous. strenuous or egregious as the yeah. buyer side. Yeah. It's a lot, uh, it, it might still be fairly stressful. And so that's our job is to manage those emotions, right? But we'll try. We're, it's it's kind of counselors. Yeah, it's not It's not as difficult as on the buyer's side. Yeah. So um, that being said, when you're going and signing those documents, you go and drop off your keys probably, or you can hand the keys off to us so we can bring them to the closing table for the buyer. Because yeah. a lot of the time as a seller, you might be signing those papers four days in advance, right? Yeah. So you give the keys to us and then we go and we relay them to the buyer party. Yep. And then you get sad because maybe it was your first home, right? Maybe it's the home that you had your kids in or uh, whatever, a lot of memories there. And you get sad and you tell us that you're sad and we try and counsel you through that. It'll never happen, right? We can't, we can't do that. But that said, it's happening and it's real and you're gonna get paid. Yeah. And hopefully <laughs> we did a good job for you. So with all of that said, guys, I hope that this guide to selling your home in the Finger Lakes helped you understand the process a little bit more. We would love to be the guys to help you. If not, hey, we know a lot of realtors around here that are great agents and we could certainly recommend you, but choose us. Yeah, absolutely, so <laughs> choose us by calling and emailing um, the information there on the screen. Yep. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell so you're notified every Tuesday and Thursday that we release a new video. Until the next video, guys, we'll see you soon.